my presentation is not available. You'll see it in the proceedings. Uh, I'm here today. I, I am uh, uh, Captain Joe Ryan. I am an independent consultant. Um, I'm here today as uh, in my role as chairman of the Navigation Steering Committee for the Radio Technical Commission for Maritime Services, uh, known as RTCM. RTCM was founded uh, after World War II as a federal commission in 1949, uh, basically with a role as an advisory body between indus from industry to the Federal Communications Commission and the U.S. Coast Guard. In the early 80s, uh, it was privatized, uh, taken out of the scope of the government, and is now uh, functions as a nonprofit organization with basically the same role. We still advise the FCC and, and the Coast Guard. Part of that has included, uh, over the years, uh, uh, the development and uh, publishing of standards, uh, which are, are used worldwide. Um, the most notably would be the uh, differential uh, corrections for GNSS, or RTCM standards. Uh, the original uh, standards for digital selective calling radios uh, are RTCM, were RTCM standards, and the RTCM standard was used as the basis for the IEC standard that's now in place. Um, RTCM standards for uh, non solus uh, um, Radars and electronic chart systems were used as the basis of IEC standards for both. Um, I, and uh, of, of interest, both of those standards have now been withdrawn, but the RST, RTCM standards are still in maintenance. Um, in 2008, uh, the Board of Directors of RTCM stood up an e-navigation steering committee with the purpose to focus and coordinate the work of the individual special committees which publish the standards, develop and publish, maintain them, uh, towards a, an e-navigation focus. Um, and uh, I'm going to explain a little bit uh, about what each of the special committees are working on and, uh, and how we relate that or have uh, focused that towards e-navigation. Uh, there are uh, seven uh, special committees which the board considers uh, part of an e-navigation group of special committees. Special Committee 109 on electronic charting technology, Special Committee 112 on ship radar, Special Committee 121 on AIS and digital messaging, and just for clarity, that's not AIS the box, that is the messaging part of AIS, so the, if you will, the content. Uh, Special Committee 127 on ELORAN, uh, Special Committee 129 on the portrayal of uh, navigation information, Special Committee 130 on electro-optical imaging systems, and Special Committee 131 on uh, multi-source uh, electronic position fixing systems. There are also, uh, I would mentioned previously, Special Committee 104 on um, uh, differential GNSS that's related, um, and Special Committee 123 on um, really on the box side of digital messaging and the RF side of digital messaging. Um, and those are basically a, sta a board level uh, liaison with the steering committee. Special Committee 109 right now is working primarily on um, uh, finishing up an, a new chart standard, or a new standard for electronic chart systems. So non solus uh, the big thing on this particular version is that it's uh, an application of the ECDIS standard instead of a competing electronic chart system standard. Uh, one of the real problems with the work that, that came out of the IEC on electronic chart systems is that it was basically defining a system in competition with ECDIS 
and so you, you didn't really have a hierarchical relationship between ECDIS and ECS, and it was difficult, uh, particularly for ship operators, to figure out what, was, what had to be fitted, uh, and particularly since uh, you know, most of this is prior to 2010, so we didn't even have uh, uh, discussions on, on the 2012 carriage uh, uh, changes. Um, now we have basically a hierarchy, you have an ECDIS, you have an ECS in classes, so you've got four classes of ECS defined, all the way down to uh, a tablet size display. Um, within the uh, uh, class A, it is defined to meet the requirements of an ECDIS backup arrangements. Uh, so that, for example, a, a, you know, a ship with a non-integrated bridge could end up with an ECDIS, and the backup could be an ECS variant of the same ECDIS um, with giving the same human interface, the same communication, proprietary communications protocols for sharing sync data and all. Uh, different from the IMO and the IEC, RTCM requires uh, electronic chart system to be connected, be capable of connecting to an AIS and requires specific support for ITU messages that are directly related to navigation, and also requires specific support for application-specific messages, not just those published by the IMO, but also those authorized for transmission or required by the uh, designated, by the authority for a designated area in which the uh, manufacturer, the developer is going to sell the ECS. And um, so that is directly uh, enabling at least the starts of the implementation uh, for e-navigation by application specific messaging. Um, and uh, in direct support of some of what the Coast Guard's doing, for example, what we saw yesterday going on in, in sector uh, San Francisco, and which you heard uh, Mike Slosi talk about in uh, the Western Rivers uh, with the Army Corps of Engineers. The, the goal from, from, our, from 109's perspective is that uh, that standard will be cited in, in the Coast Guard's uh, pending rulemaking for the revision of the U.S. safety of nav uh, navigation safety regulations, and uh, which is, I suppose, I could be very hopeful and say maybe 2016, and uh, but but hopefully before 2018. Um, and I didn't see an objection from Mike, so uh, uh, hopefully that's a, a good sentiment. Uh, but unfortunately, rulemaking takes a long time in the federal government here in the United States. Uh, and even longer, perhaps, under the Department of Homeland Security than it did under the Department of Transportation. Uh, the next committee I want to talk about is uh, Special Committee 112. They're working on a revision uh, to uh, the second revision to the non solus uh, radar standard, which was actually last published in 1995. Um, the primary update to this standard is, as we did with the Chart standard, an application of international standard IEC 62388 for solarless radar, and specifically the um, category three identifier uh, within uh, 62388. Again, four classes of radar are uh, are defined, um, and uh, it's intended to to be looked at as a product hierarchy. Um, just as we did with the ECS. Within there, we have the same requirement for the support of ASM. There are obviously uh, um, primary, one of the uh, purposes of uh, AIS is, is uh, uh, vessel uh, communication, so you obviously want that on your, displayed on your radar as well. And uh, the cross between, we have a, a relationship identified in both standards um, for a common product line for the integration of radar and, and charting. Uh, and we've, we've made some very, uh, you know, taken uh, 
the industry around the table and uh, uh, the regulators at the table to propose some things. If we had a widescreen display and we were able to do this and show, for example, uh, here's a chart window and a radar window on the exact widescreen display meeting the size requirements, is this something that would be an acceptable for these type of things and have been um, uh, very successful at brokering the, the compromise between the regulators and the industry so that what goes into minimum standards for the industry that, that the industry is writing is acceptable for uh, what the purpose of the regulation, you know, to meet the purpose of the regulations. And so it is our hope, uh, again, like the 109 standard, we hope that the 112 uh, revision is, will be, end up being cited for, as part of the uh, rulemaking for the revision of those navigation safety regulations. Uh, Special Committee 121 on AIS and digital messaging has uh, completed uh, a standard uh, on the creation and the qualification of application-specific messages. Uh, those, uh, that standard is um, going out for vote here this month, as are the, are the other two, and um, that is going to end up as a, um, a checkbox or a, a um, graphical implementation on IALA's collection of ASM. So when you're looking at, at an ASM, a regional ASM, identified on the IALA, IALA collection, a competent authority will know immediately whether it meets the standard uh, or not. And I, I'm going to um, uh, actually look out to Mike for guidance, but not speaking for the Coast Guard, but I believe it is their intention that messages transmitted on their VDL uh, that, would be, that are authorized for transmission on their VDL meet the, uh, the RTCM standard. Can I say that? Okay. So that, that's the case, that that'll be the case in the U.S. anyway. Uh, Special Committee uh, uh, 127 on ELRAN is in the uh, process of completing uh, draft performance uh, uh, standards for ELRAN receiver equipment. Uh, they're working with uh, Ayala and particularly Trinity House uh, uh, toward that end. And actually, uh, uh, Trinity House chairs that special committee. Um, special committee 129 uh, on the portrayal is working on uh, uh, a portrayal standard. And it's not something that's in direct competition with the presentation standards from the IMO or IEC, but uh, comes into a little bit um, more specific detail. and looks at a couple of things. It, it looks at the data coming into an ECS or, or, or radar system from your, your IEC or, or NMEA interfaces and messages, the parameters of those messages, and then using those parameters as the breakout says, look, here's your you know, latitude and longitude. It needs to be displayed textually, uh, maybe in, in these particular cases this data could be displayed either textually or graphically. You know, some data might be symbolized, some data, and, and I think you saw that in Lee Alexander's presentation yesterday. And it, the collection of parameters is from your, as I said, the IC, the NMEA messages, also the breakout of the ITU messages for AIS, and the application-specific messages from the IALA collection. Uh, limited up front, I think, right now to those Re, the, the international messages and the regional messages uh, that are identified for uh, use in the U.S. Uh, Special Committee 130 on electro-optic uh, information systems is on a hi hiatus right now. Um, the initial work started and uh, basically hit a roadblock because they found insufficient um, detail in the interface messaging for the cameras. And so they're back working with the NMEA and IEC Working Group 6 to define additional messaging uh, for camera interfaces so that, for example, you can have your uh, camera as part of Lee's uh, piece up there. You could have your camera, 
picture alongside a pop-up of the picture from the coast pilot or whatever uh, while you're trying to figure out what lighthouse is what. Um, I'm not sure when we expect them to recon, uh, reconvene. Uh, I, I expect it won't be before um, the NMEA one net standard is published, and I think that's uh, target for December 14. Uh, but I'm not sure uh, where it is in the in the time scale. Uh, Special Committee 131 on uh, multi-source uh, uh, EPFS has uh, uh, been working with Ayala and the Greater Lighthouse Authorities to uh, uh, draft performance standards uh, going into NCR, NCSR1 at IMO this summer. Um, the, uh, the initial draft was uh, done by Ayala, then partnered with uh, RTCM, uh, gone through a review draft, made some uh, significant changes uh, in terms of GNSS requirements, the original draft um, uh, was that the system had to support at least one constellation and then could just pair that with a terrestrial radio navigation system, for example, ELORAN. Um, RTCM started with the position that at least two of the uh, GNSS constellations must be supported and RTCM further recommended that all constellations be supported and has a, a secondary recommendation that uh, if practicable, uh, it should also be able to do cross-constellation uh, fixing using satellites from, you know, this satellite from GPS, that satellite from Galileo, and this other satellite from Baidu, and uh, maybe a second satellite from GPS, and those four satellites can give you a fix. Um, in RTCM standards, we have shalls and shoulds. A shall is mandatory to comply with the standard. A should is an RTCM recommendation that you, this is something you should put in. Um, and um, we like that because it allows us to encourage certain things that are above and beyond the minimums, um, which help, you know, hopefully the developer and manufacturer uh, get the feel for you know, where we're trying to get to from the, the user end perspective. Um, within the one scope of the 131 uh, work for multi-source, uh, a couple of things that were put on the table in the terms of reference were uh, consideration for inertial systems uh, and, for example, and radar positioning as backup arrangements to a single source GNSS derived primarily from the fact that we have no terrestrial radio navigation backup system in the, in the U.S. currently. Um, within that work, uh, we've, we've basically, uh, at the ENAV level, taken the radar and the inertial out of the 131 scope. We will put the radar fixing into the 112 scope and probably say, it, I doubt it will be a shall, but it will probably be a should to encourage manufacturers if you employ uh, uh, target tracking in your radar, and some radars are required to do that, you should also employ some, some kind of means of, of automatic radar positioning using the uh, SYNC data and be able to translate that data over to uh, the electronic charting system. Uh, we'll have to initiate with NMEA and Word Group 6 a standard set of messages to convey at least the equivalent data of, say, a, a radar line of positioning uh, series. Um, so there's a there's a, a coordination across the multiple committees at RTCM and then also with the with the NMEA, uh, which has a, a direct coordination with IEC, TCAD Working Group Six. In terms of ENAV implementation and in the United States. Uh, we have been working with uh, the Coast Guard and the Army Corps of Engineers. And uh, one of the application, uh, applications for, I guess an ENAV application for ASM uh, is piggybacking on uh, one of the pieces Mike Slosey pointed to yesterday. He talked about the uh, 
use of, uh, uh, you know, noting a, a, a position of a buoy or an, an outage of light and feeding that back through the Coast Guard's I a tonus system for uh, correction and work and, and, and that cycle. And within, uh, within the steering committee out of RTCM Special Committee 109 on the charting, uh, this came from the user side, which was, well, if we're going to end up getting, you know, doing something like that, why can't we take the broadcast notice to mariners uh, that we get out of Navtex and, and, you know, apply that as a, an automated manual correction within the ECS or the ECDIS? And uh, that's in a little bit of uh, uh, initial research work in, in looking at that. Um, that created a uh, uh, immediate work item for uh, the CMTS uh, harmonization uh, uh, group uh, on their uh, newly titled Future Navigation Implementation uh, uh, Assist Team, and uh, which involves uh, the Army Corps, NOAA, uh, I believe NGA and uh, as well as the Coast Guard and um, they're going to look at um, how to make sure that we have common identifier for marine safety af information including uh, aid uh, to navigation uh, uh, notice murder corrections so that if we're implementing in the background in an ECS something that was broadcast off of uh, Navtex or more likely the nav text information reformatted and broadcast as an AIS ASM to make sure that when that official correction comes back in the uh, chart data from NOAA that there's a link for the ECS to remove the manual correction automatically. Um, with the intention there or the, the uh, reminder from the mariners that don't make my job more difficult than it already is if you're going to automate it make sure that you're automating it from start to finish, not, and all I have to do is review it. I don't have to go back and do more work because you had an automated correction come in. Um, I think that's, uh, I think that's about, that's about the end of uh, what I have to say, I think. And uh, so you want questions at the end, right? I Thank you, Joe. It was pretty amazing he could do the, all of that off the top of his head. But I've known Joe a long time. It's not amazing, actually. 